Jesse Marsh was close to becoming Southampton manager before contract talks broke down. Currently bottom of the Premier League standings, we'll explore the hypothetical situation of Marsh taking on the Southampton job. I'm starting this rebuild just after the close of the January transfer window in a relegation battle with not many points separating these teams. The Saints have bolstered their squad in recent weeks, completing a club record signing of Kamaldine Sulemana for 22 million pounds. Paul Onuachu joins as a consistent goal scorer from Hank. Versatile midfielder Carlos Alcaraz transfers from Racing Club in Argentina. And Mislav Orsic, who after 200 games played for Dinamo Zagreb, joins for 8 million. However, the best business Southampton have done in recent years is extending James Ward Prowse's contract as we look to fend off transfers or talks from other clubs. Southampton have one of the best youth academies, so it's fitting we have a homegrown talent in this save. Tyler George is a 66 rated English striker slash center forward. His potential at 80 to 94, but if you look at his attributes, I think we've got a center back on our hands. It's not often you see this, but he gets a plus eight in his overall up to 74. This will be our starting 11 for the remainder of the season as we look to fight off relegation. A couple of pre-contract deals. McCarthy joining Rangers at the start of next season and Elliot Yanusi is off to Everton. I want to see a little bit more development from George, so he'll be on a short-term loan at Napoli. As we review results at the end of this first season, we did enough to avoid the drop. 14th place in the Premier League, and it was a close contest at the top of the table, but Liverpool win the league due to goal differential. And it was fairly close at the bottom end of the table. Only four points separated us, and 18th place leads United. Bournemouth and Brentford will be joining them in the championship next year. Watford and Burnley securing automatic promotion to the Premier League, and Sheffield United win the championship playoff. Newcastle United have been flying high as of late and it's fitting that they win the FA Cup against Manchester City. But City will get their revenge in the Carabao Cup as they get the win against Chelsea. Building upon that, City secure their first Champions League against Real Madrid. In what was a very entertaining Europa League final, Arsenal defeat Trabzonspor on penalties. And Fiorentina were victorious in the Conference League final against Slavia Praha. You can't ask for much more for Onuachu's first season. 17 goals scored, 15 of those coming in the Premier League. That put him as the 10th best goal scorer in this competition. Harry Kane winning the gold boot with 24 goals. And it's no surprise as our captain, Ward Prowse, leads the club in assists. He's all the way down in 13th for the league. It was De Bruyne who was by far the leader in this category. As for George's development, he saw a little bit more of an increase in his overall during that Napoli loan spell, up to a 77 rating. We were never going to meet most of these board objectives in Season 1. Here's to hoping Season 2 goes a little bit better. Anytime you're doing a Southampton crew mode, you need to focus on the long term and let the squad develop. But your support is always appreciated on these rebuilds. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. These expectations from the board might be the most ambitious that I've seen in a FIFA 23 rebuild. As for domestic success, we need to finish in a Europa League spot and also reach the round of 16 of the FA Cup. Granted, we've seen a big rise to our transfer budget, 70 plus million. And considering how many high potential players we have at the club, I think it's only right that we review offers from some of the biggest clubs. While both Dortmund and Manchester United wanted Walker Peters' signature, I thought the offer from Manchester United was the most interesting, even including Scott McTominay as part of this deal. But we ended up just going for straight finances as we received 40 million as part of this transfer. Jan Bednarak's days at Southampton might be numbered as he just completed a loan spell to Aston Villa. He will be joining Everton in this save. And Musa Gineppo, while promising, isn't going to be getting as many minutes as I think he'd like. So he will be joining Lazio for 7.5 million. Same sort of thing for Adam Armstrong. It was a risky transfer signing from a championship club. Just hasn't worked out for him, so he'll be joining Torino for 7.5 million. Now for incoming arrivals, this first one is quite predictable but I think it's fitting for a Jesse Marsh rebuild. With Leeds being relegated in this save and also the very limited minutes that McKenney and Marsh had together, it is time for Weston's return back to the Premier League. Southampton is actually one of the clubs he's been linked with quite a bit in the last few years. The box-to-box -box midfielder signing for 27.5 million with his contract expiring at season's end, we picked him up for under his evaluation of 30 million. Sticking with the theme of players loaned out by their club, our next arrival will be Callum hudson Adoy. He's seen a potential drop in recent years and I think Chelsea aren't in need of any more wingers in their squad. He's seen an alright a number of appearances for Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga and I think a move to an up and coming Premier League club could be a good next step in his career. He'll be taking on the number 17 for us as he signs for 17.5 million. His contract was also coming to an end 
so it's a good discount for us. Nicholas Jackson was linked with both Southampton and some other Premier League clubs like Bournemouth in the January transfer window. The striker has recently seen a call up from Villarreal's B team, and because Onuwachu is an older striker, I want to make sure we invest in the youth and give us some more options at the striker position moving forward in this rebuild. Not a bad fee at all as we only had to spend 10 million as part of this transfer, and I think it's fair to say this is another situation with the player's contract expiring. As a result of this, I will be loaning out Shea Adams, following a similar career path to other former Southampton strikers like Danny Ings who made the move to Aston Villa. But it's about time we build upon our existing youth academy. We've got a four-star, four-star scout to begin with. He'll be staying in England for the entire season as we search for any type of player. Ollie Coleman is a five-star, five-star scout also from England. He'll be in Scotland for the rest of the season, looking for any type of player. And to round things out, we've got a Portuguese scout who will spend the year in Wales searching for any type of player. It's fitting that we start our season against Aston Villa, and here is the new look Southampton starting 11. A couple of changes to both the bench and the starting 11 as our record signing Sulemana takes over at the starting left wing spot. I'm sure Orsic will still get a good amount of play time anywhere in that front four. And a great result to kick off the season as one of our new arrivals, Weston McKenney, scores the only goal of the match. We'll check on results results in January 2024 and it seems like we're on track for our domestic success objective of qualifying for the Europa League. It's still a long season ahead but our plan of focusing on our youth academy has paid off as George has taken over at the starting right center back spot. We will see two more pre-contract departures. Stuart Armstrong, longtime Southampton player, will be joining Real Batiste at the start of next season. And Jack Stevens moves to the lower tiers of English football as he joins Luton Town. The Jesse Marsh rebuild at Southampton is well and truly underway. We've seen a sixth place finish in the Premier League with Chelsea winning the league title this time around. Three points ahead of Manchester United, City and Liverpool will again round out the top four. A surprise as Brighton will see relegation along with newly promoted Watford and Sheffield United. It's no surprise as Leeds and Brentford both return to the Premier League, going over the Centurion mark. West Brom joining them as playoff winners. And it's a favorable result for us as Chelsea win the FA Cup, defeating last year's winner Newcastle United. Manchester City still picking up trophies as they defeat Watford in the Carabao Cup final. An all Bundesliga Champions League final with Bayer Leverkusen defeating FC Bayern 3-2. Marseille pick up the Europa League title against Atalanta and Napoli will add a Conference League title to their trophy cabinet. Onuachu stays as the top goal scorer at the club 19 from 45. That was enough to put him as the sixth highest goal scorer in the Premier League. Chiro Mobile tied with Phil Foden as Golden Boot winners, and Hudson Adoy in his first season has done really well. 12 assists, putting him in the top four for this category. Another Italian player at Chelsea, Vincenzo Grifo, with 12 assists from 37. Tyler George had the potential to start off with, but he is making good on his opportunity. Up plus five to his rating as he is a staple in the Southampton back line. But a couple of newly promoted Youth Academy players. Tony Taylor is a 67 rated Welsh right back with 83 to 93 potential. John Douglas, our signing from Scotland, 67 rated. The right winger has 89 to 94 potential. Some good work for our board objectives and it is a bit misleading because we have actually qualified for the Europa League next season. Southampton are back in the Europa League after their last appearance during the 16-17 season. And this is a squad that with a few improvements is capable of winning the entire competition. For board objectives, we need to continue signing English players, finish in a Europa League spot once again in the Premier League, try to win the FA Cup, and for the Europa League, reach the final. A pretty similar transfer budget to last year, about a 10 million rise to 80 plus million and this time we won't see any huge departures, rather some incoming arrivals. From a points per match perspective, Jesse Marsh's best club was RB Salzburg, and I think their current best player that hasn't confirmed a transfer away yet is Noah Okafor. Quite a realistic move for him to go to the Bundesliga joining up with Mainz, but a move to the Premier League is certainly something that could happen in the future. Because he works best playing behind another striker, I think it will occupy that center attacking mid slash center forward spot for us as he joins for a 35 million transfer transfer fee. It's a high sum to pay, but at just 24 years old, I think there's a lot of good potential ahead for him. It might seem repetitive to sign another center attacking mid, but I couldn't pass up on the opportunity to add Georgia Mihailovic to our squad. The Chicago Fire homegrown player has also featured for Montreal, both clubs that Jesse Marsh has either played for or managed. Personally, I love his transfer to Azet not only for his ability to play abroad, but also for the connections they have to other Americans like Josie Altidore. I can see him feeling 
filling in at the center attacking mid role or deeper in the midfield as he joins the club for a 30 million transfer fee. And it's a good thing we signed him now because I think there's going to be a lot of interest from other clubs in Europe. Our next arrival has connections to Southampton's current caretaker manager, Ruben Sellis, who spent some time as an assistant coach over at FC Copenhagen. Rooney Bardacci is one of the biggest talents for his age group with interest from clubs like Ajax, Bayern, Barcelona, and Chelsea. Still plenty of room for him to grow in his rating as he only cost us 7.5 million as part of this transfer, which with his contract expiring was exactly at his current evaluation. We'll close out the summer signings with a free agent acquisition. Ainsley Maitland-Niles has been loaned out quite a few times recently from Arsenal to clubs like West Brom, Roma, and of course, most recently Southampton. And we will see a single departure. Chaleta Tsar isn't getting as much play time anymore. I found it amusing that his former club Marseille submitted an offer, but he'll be joining Benderek over at Everton as he joins for 25 million. We're off to a good start with our youth academy system and we'll keep on building upon that as our English scout stays in England for the rest of the season and two new countries as we scout out the Republic of Ireland for nine months and Northern Ireland for nine months searching for any type of player. Funnily enough, we start our season once again against Aston Villa and our team continues to get stronger. For the most part, morale is at an all time high and that was represented in the scoreline. Another 1-0 win, this time the goal coming from our defender, George. And we can take a look at our Europa League group. We have Lyon, Pauk, and Apuel to worry about. Ryan Cherky still at Lyon, the five-star skill move, five-star weak foot player up to a 79 overall rating. Giannis Constanelius, a 73 rated talent over at Pauk. And I didn't expect to see Daniel Maldini at Apuel, but the 71 rated Italian center attacking mid has made the transfer. It may be optimistic for us to expect the same result this time around in January, but we've done one better. We're up to Champions League qualification as things stand. And for our Europa League group, we put in a very good points total, not losing a single match and advancing first in our group, along with Lyon. Not expecting many changes to our starting 11 as the squad is meshing nicely. Joe Rebo losing his place at center attacking mid was unhappy, so I let him leave to Inter on a 15 million transfer fee. But before we can get into the Europa League knockout stages, we do have a cup final. It's the Carabao Cup final against Spurs. And while we put up a good fight, it's Hyung Min Son to score the late winner giving Spurs their first trophy in a number of years, and it's fitting that Son will be the one to lift the trophy for him. But the Europa League was always going to be a bigger priority for me as we start our knockout stage action against Fiorentina. They've completed the signing of Mohamed Kudus from Ajax, and he's now up to an 84 overall rating. We were scoring goals for fun though. Two new additions with Okafor and Mihailovic getting the goals as we advance 4-1 to one on aggregate after the second leg results. Tough draw here in the quarterfinals as we'll match up against Real Madrid. They've completed the signing of Luis Diaz from the Premier League, and it was always going to be an uphill battle as we scored the first goal but lost the first leg 2-1, to one, and the second leg was no contest. Madrid advanced 5-2 to two on aggregate. However, we still put in a really solid outing in the Premier League. Third place means that we've got Champions League football next season. Chelsea once again winning the league with a little bit of turnover for the top four. United, us, and Arsenal qualifying for the highest stage of European football. The relegation spots this season going to Burnley, Nottingham Forest, and West Brom. Brighton will bounce back to the Premier League along with Bournemouth, and it's Norwich to win the championship playoffs this year. What a season for Leeds. Not only have they avoided relegation, but they also won the FA Cup, so they'll be in the Europa League next year. Of course, we saw that defeat in the Carabao Cup final to Spurs. Bayern get their revenge in the Champions League as they defeat Juventus 2-1. Benfica winning the Europa League against Inter and it's Ajax to win the Conference League title against Copenhagen. Okafor taking over as the top goal scorer at the club, 27 from 56 is a really good output. However, not a lot of those goals coming in the Premier League because he's nowhere to be seen in the top 15, and Erling Haaland falling just short of the Premier League single season goal record. James Ward-Prowse's age is no problem. He's hit the 30-year-old mark and he's still going up in his rating and leads the club in assists. However, it was our new signing Mihailovic that actually got more assists in the Premier League as he had the fourth most, just a single assist behind league leader Phil Foden. A lot of updates from our youth academy. We'll start with Douglas, the Scottish winger. He's up plus eight in his rating to 75 overall. Tony Taylor, the Welsh right back, up plus five to a 74. 
and then some new additions. An English left winger, Toby Berry, is already starting at a 70 rating with potential of 88 to 94. Liam Conway is a talent from Northern Ireland. The 64 rated left winger has 81 to 91 potential. And we've got a center back from the Republic of Ireland, Mark McManus, 61 rated and 80 to 90 potential. To my surprise, we haven't seen our manager rating rise above 80, but we're doing well. And I've got a lot of optimism for season four of this rebuild. Can we rise to the occasion and find success for Southampton in the Champions League? That's the big question. But from a ratings perspective, this squad is good enough. For board expectations, it's pretty similar to previous years trying to sign an English player, finish in a Champions League spot in the Premier League, win the FA Cup, and reach the semi-final of the UEFA Champions League. This might be one of the biggest rises to our transfer budget though, nearly doubling to 160 million. It goes to show how much spending in the Premier League has increased as of late. But we'll kick off our signings here in Season 4 with our first player from RB Leipzig. Jesse Marsh had a brief stint managing this club, but I am a big fan of David Raum, who has seen a rise in his valuation from Gorther Forth to Hoffenheim and now at Leipzig. I would consider him to be one of the best left backs in the world as current things stand. Really not a bad fee at all considering his quality. 35 million is exactly what he's currently evaluated at at Leipzig. When you hear about Timber in career mode, I feel like most people immediately think of Yurion Timber, the talent over at Ajax. I was linked to Manchester United over the summer, but Quentin Timber also has some great potential and he's more of a midfielder. He's playing a big part in Feyenoord's plan to retake the Eredivisie title after Ajax's dominance in recent years. Southampton also have a strong connection with the Eredivisie, so I feel like this transfer just makes sense. We ended up paying his release clause of 42.4 million. It's certainly a lot for a player that isn't immediately going to be in the starting 11, but we've got the funds available. John Tolkien will be our final signing of the summer at the New York Red Bulls. Left back has completed a very realistic transfer in this save, moving to RB Salzburg. But he is one of the best current prospects in MLS, and I wanted to complete at least one of those signings for a Jesse Marsh rebuild. We had to pay 20 million to complete his move from Salzburg. A little bit more than his evaluation, but he will be a good backup left back to us. I say that because we will be seeing a few departures from the club, starting with Sekumara. He's a good player, but he just never fit into this team as I would have liked. We still receive a lot of funds for his transfer to PSV. And then to an extent, this is kind of a swap deal with Leipzig. Of course, we had Raum's arrival to us. He will be joining Leipzig on a 25 million transfer. Orsic has definitely done a fair job for us, but he's getting up in age, so a move to Syria is going to be his next step as he transfers to Roma for 25 million. Another player that I would have loved to have been part of this rebuild had he progressed better. Lavia never reached the rating I was hoping for. Still a lot of time left in his career as he joins Ajax for 10 million. And finally, James Bree will be heading to Club Bruges on a 5 million transfer. It's a new opponent to start our Premier League season as we begin against Manchester City. But this is a team that I think is ready for Champions League football. We've certainly got the rating, and hopefully we've got the performance in us as well. We'll need some time to recover after a 2-0 loss in our season opener, but we need to rebound quickly as we have to face Barcelona, Monaco, and Shakhtar Donetsk in the Champions League group stage. Barca have a history with Uruguayan strikers. Of course, Luis Suarez also featuring for the club. They completed the signing of Darwin Nunez. It's a return for Kyle Walker Peters to St. Mary's as he is now at Monaco at an 83 rating. And Manor Solomon staying steady at Shakhtar Donetsk up to an 82 overall. One of our biggest January transfer windows to date and somehow we are top of the Premier League standings. We are on track for a great season season only three draws and three losses to go with our 14 wins and we equaled Barcelona's point total in the Champions League however on a head-to-head -head basis they had the advantage no need to improve upon our starting 11 as I've made a change and brought Okafor to that striker spot he's leading the charge along with Sulemana at an 88 overall but I do want to complete one of our board objectives of signing an English player I saw Alex Mighton available as a free agent the Nottingham Forest talent should still have good potential as he signs as a sporadic player on a three-year deal but our first opponent in the Champions League knockout stage will be the team that knocked us out of the Europa League last year, Real Madrid. To highlight a new player, they've completed the signing of Hakimi, who returns to Madrid after several years away. But a great showing from us in the first leg, we win 2-0, and in the second leg, we do enough to secure the draw, advancing 3-1 on aggregate, and now we'll face Inter in the quarterfinals. Of course, it's a return for Joe Aribo, who completed the move to the Italian side last season. A 1-1 draw in the first leg and a 4-0 result in the second leg means that we're through to the semifinals. 
where we'll face RB Leipzig. It seems like we're matching up against a lot of our former players this season as Parad is up to an 82 rating, but we scored some early goals to give us a 2-1 win in the first leg, and a draw was enough to put us through 3-2 on aggregate into the Champions League final against Milan. Still a couple fixtures before we can play that Champions League final, starting with the FA Cup final against Wolves. This is a competition that had a lot of importance to me as the Saints have won the FA Cup during the 75-76 season and will return as winners. It's the first trophy that James Ward-Prowse will be lifting in this rebuild and this will give us some added momentum heading into the Champions League final. I think the big question on your guys' mind is if we won the Premier League. The answer to that is no. Not as good of a second half of the season as the first half as City were in impeccable form to win the Premier League. United and Arsenal round out the top four. Relegation spots going to Norwich, Aston Aston Villa and Brighton. Nottingham Forest and Watford will be seeing a return to the Premier League and Blackburn Rovers winning the championship playoffs. The Carabao Cup winners was Manchester United as they defeat Crystal Palace 4-3 on penalties. City win the Europa League against Villarreal and Fiorentina will win the Conference League against Hank. Okafor, of course, had an amazing rating, put in a great goal output, 35 from 61. It was the sixth most goals in the Premier League, as it was a pretty close contest between him and the Golden Boot winner, Harry Kane. But what a season for James Ward-Prowse, still rising in his rating and now hitting the 20-plus mark for assists. He was by far the Premier League leader with 17 from 38 appearances. We'll check back on former players before we play this Champions League final. Virgil, up to an 87 rating at Liverpool. Sadio Mane at an 86 overall, now transferring to Juve. Pierre-Emile Hoiber will join Mane at Juve, now at an 86 rating. And arguably Southampton's best youth academy player was Luke Shaw. He's transferred to Espanyol in the save at an 82 overall. All things seem to be pointing towards a good result here. We have the momentum heading into this Champions League final. We have a great combination of both youth and experience as Rooney will start things down the right-hand side. Eventually, the ball finds Okafor in the box. And as one of the best players in this team, he will make good on his chance to give us the lead. We're into the second half already as now Liao tries crossing the ball in the center. Lazunu does enough to collect. And now, with just 20 minutes left to play, Mihailovic nearly gets his goal, but it is saved. McKenney, though, in the 86th minute, will be getting part of the goal scoring action. Our first signing in this save will get the second goal of this Champions League final. Perfectly fitting that in James Ward-Prowse's best season, he lifts this Champions League trophy for Southampton as we close the season as FA Cup winners and Champions League winners.